Hey there, my name is Kyle, and welcome to my PJAX introduction video. Throughout this video, we'll discuss what is PJAX, why it's a resource and why it should be used, and a general non-technical overview of how it actually works. Put simply, PJAX is just an AJAX request in the history push state. Now this idea isn't anything new, and it's nothing fancy, but when used, it can provide the opportunity to create a better user experience by creating custom page transitions, or by giving the illusion of a well-optimized and extremely snappy front-end website. Now with the oversimplified view of what PJAX is out of the way, let's discuss why it's a resource that should actually be used. One of the main benefits to using PJAX is that the prefetching ability that comes with PJAX allows you to provide the illusion of a well-optimized front-end experience. Now I say the illusion of a well-optimized experience because the ability to prefetch a link doesn't actually make the page load any faster. You still need to have proper caching and you need to have optimized backend code that runs in the server. However, by sending the page request a few hundred milliseconds before the user actually clicks on a link means that sometimes you can actually get the page back and cached before the user even clicks on the link. This means that when they decide to click on the link, we can immediately swap out content, making the front end feel extremely snappy. It also provides the ability using custom events that fire throughout the page transition process to do custom page transitions. Whether it's something as simple as setting the cursor to be the default operating system's wait cursor while the new page loads in and swaps out the content, or by doing something a little bit more advanced where you completely hide the page, swap out the content, and then reveal the new content using a custom animation or transition. So now let's discuss a non-technical overview of how PJAX actually transitions from one page to the next. If you're looking for a more detailed documentation on this process, I suggest you check out the full documentation through the link in the description below. For example, we'll pretend that we have an anchor element that when clicked, we want it to bring us to the About Us page of a website. The first thing that'll happen is the user will hover over the actual anchor element. At this point, PJAX will fire a prefetch event. When this event is fired, we'll grab whatever the value is within the href attribute attached to that link element, and we'll create an XML HTTP request and send that off to the server. Now at this point, a handful of different things could happen. For example, if the user was to unhover before the response has been returned from the server, we will just abort the XML HTTP request. However, if we've already received the response from the server, the response will be cached as a temporary HTML document. If the user still decides to unhover the element, the temporary document will just be destroyed and will clear our cache. Now, if the document has been cached and the user clicks on the link, because we already have the response from the server, we'll just immediately swap the content. This is what gives PJAX the very optimized and snappy feel. Another possibility is that the server is still responding to our XML HTTP request and the user has clicked to confirm that they want to transition into this page. At this point, we set a confirmed flag meaning that when the server finally responds with our page, we'll just immediately swap out the content. So now that we've gone through the overview of how the prefetch works, let's discuss how content actually gets swapped out from one document to the next. The first thing we'll do is make sure that we're actually allowed to swap from one document to the next document. There's a handful of different checks that we'll do. For starters, we'll make sure that we're actually allowed to switch to this page based on what the front end developer wants us to do. For example, if the link has a no transition class or has a custom attribute of prevent hyphen pjax, pjax just won't touch that page transition and we'll just let the browser natively load in the next page. In order to not break some of the default browser functionality, if on the link the download attribute is available or if the target attribute is set to underscore blank, pjax also won't try to transition the page. Assuming that we actually want PJAX to transition from the current document to the new document, we next check to see to make sure that the new document can actually be transitioned into. We start by checking to see what the response status was from the server. Some of the edge cases, such as a 500 or internal server error response status, or a 301 or 302 redirect status, means that we probably can't actually swap out any content, we'll just take the URI that was requested from the server, and we'll just tell the browser to just natively load in that new page. Therefore, any redirects that need to happen or the error message that needs to be displayed with whatever internal server error happened can just be displayed normally. Assuming that we receive a 200 level or an OK response status from the server, we next check to make sure that the page looks similar to the page that we're swapping. 
We do this by taking our current HTML document and our temporary document, and we make sure that we have the same selector or selectors within both documents. If both documents match up and have the same selectors, all PGX does is simply grab the inner HTML from each selector from the temporary document, and it dumps it into the containers or selectors within the current document. We then update the document's title to whatever the temporary document's title is, and we do a push state to update our browser's URI to whatever the requested URI was. If for any reason during this process, the pages don't look the same or something breaks, we have a fallback where the browser will just natively load in whatever the requested URI was. So along with providing the illusion of an optimized and snappy front end, PGX also allows you to create custom page transitions by listening for a handful of unique events that fire on the document. By default, a send event is fired whenever the user clicks to confirm that they want to transition to a new page. We suggest you set the cursor for your website to use the operating system's default wait cursor. Once the content has actually been switched, PJAX will fire an end event, at which point you could reset the cursor back to the default state. If you want to do full page transitions where you hide the page, let PJAX swap out the content, and then reveal the new content, you can set a flag in PJAX, meaning that it won't actually swap out content until it receives a custom continue event from your front end application. This means that when you receive the start event, you could hide or mask your page with whatever custom animation you want. Once the animation has finished, you could fire the continue event. At this point, PJAX will make sure that the pages can actually be swapped. It'll swap the pages and then fire the end event, at which point your front end application can hear the end event and then reveal the new content. It'll also fire an error or a cancel event which can fire at any point in time when something breaks horribly or something is canceled by the user. For more information on the different events that you can set up or how to use custom page transitions, please see the full documentation for details. And that's about it for the overview of how to use PJAX. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask or head over to the GitHub and fork your own copy of Fuel PJAX and start messing around with it on your own. If you have any features that you'd like to see in upcoming versions, please feel free to create a new enhancement request within the issues tab. Thanks for watching.